We're in Colossians chapter 1, finishing up this section between verses 9 and 14, in verses 13 and 14 today. But in this section, Paul has been telling the Colossian believers, this is how I'm praying for you, asking that you would be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And I'm praying that you would know God's will so that you can walk in a manner and live your life, conduct your life in such a manner that is worthy of God and fully pleasing to Him. And this is what that life will look like if you do so. You'll be bearing fruit in every good work. You'll be growing, increasing in the knowledge of God. You'll be being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. And you'll be giving thanks to God the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And this last section is what we wanna talk about today. He's delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. What does this mean that he's delivered us from the domain of darkness. Well, the word domain simply means rule or authority or kingdom. You know, um, a king would have a territory that he ruled over and that territory was his domain. My house is my domain. I have authority over my house, or at least my wife does. She can decide what color she wants the walls painted, um, but I protect my domain against intruders and other people who would come to do us harm. That's my domain, okay? The uh, word domain means rule and authority and kingdom, okay? And this section in Colossians reminds me of um, Jesus's commission to Paul. Paul tells us about that in Acts chapter 26. He says, I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. This verse almost parallels that. This commission um, that Paul's telling them about that Jesus gave to him is the same one he gives to us to go into the world with the gospel and take the gospel to every creature, to make disciples of all nations, that we're to be opening the eyes of the blind, that they may be delivered from the domain of darkness and transferred to the kingdom of his beloved son. And this this um, domain of darkness, this is really the... Um, the place that every human being is born into as a child. Um, when we come into this world, we come into the world born and conceived in sin. And as we do, we are born into this domain of darkness under the authority of Satan. In fact, John talks about, um, the Gospel of John talks about Jesus coming to the world as a light, but the darkness did not comprehend it, right? The the darkness didn't receive him. Um, and and, and and Ephesians actually describes this kind of natural state of human humankind in chapter two. He says, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in once you, which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, Satan, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of humankind. He's saying like this is the natural state of humanity. We were all in darkness. We were all lost. There is none righteous, no, not one, the Bible says, right? So this is the domain. The domain of darkness is that domain, that rule, that authority that Satan carries over the world and to those who are born into darkness, okay? And the word transferred. The word transferred reminds me of another concept in the Bible called imputation. And imputation is really just a big theological word um, for that, that concept um, or that act of God. Um, the Father in transferring the righteousness from one to another and transferring the sin of one to another. This used to happen in the Old Testament with the scapegoat. Remember that the um, people would lay their hands upon the goat and um, the priest would transfer the sins of the people onto the goat and then they would drive the goat into the wilderness and he would, in a sense, symbolically carry the sins of the people away into the wilderness, into the outer darkness, right? Um, but this in this act, this is this is this word imputation. This describes that act of God where he transfers the righteousness of Christ to us, transferring the sin of us to Jesus Christ 
upon the cross, okay? And it's this act of imputation where God um, takes the sin that is in us and imputes that to Jesus Christ, and he takes his righteousness and imputes it to us or transfers it to us. That's the basis for our being declared righteous um, by faith in Christ, okay? Our justification, that's that word being declared righteous by God the Father, our justification, um, we are justified by faith in Christ. And the basis for that is the imputation of Christ's righteousness to us and his bearing our sin. Okay, um, in 2 Corinthians, it talks about this. Uh, Paul says, for our sake, he made him, he made Jesus, okay, for our sake, he made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of of God. Okay, so it's in this transaction of God transferring the sin of you and me onto Christ and, and, and transferring the righteousness of Christ to you and me by faith in the finished work of Christ that another transaction is taking place at the same time. Okay, um, so, so in the moment that our sin is transferred to Jesus Christ, we're being delivered. Okay, so when he transfers our sin onto Christ upon the cross, and that sin is paid for upon the cross. In that moment, we're being delivered from the domain of darkness and from the authority of Satan. In Colossians chapter 2, the next chapter of this book, um, Paul says it this way, And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God has made alive together with him, having forgiven all of your trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. Okay, that, that record of debt is that list of every sin, every wrong, every offense to God that you have ever committed. It, it's, it's in this record of debt. He says this, he set aside. This, that record of debt of all of your sin, he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He, in doing this, okay, so he took all of your sin, he nailed it to the cross. So in, in a sense, God imputed or laid upon Christ all of your sin. And then when Christ was nailed to the cross, that sin was nailed to the cross with him. And by his blood, that sin was paid for. And by doing this, it says he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Okay, the authority that Satan has over you and over this world is due to the sin of all of mankind. So the authority that he holds over you, the, the, that is your guilt in Christ, your guilt before God. And by this, you dwell in darkness because you're separated from God by your sin. Because you're separated from God, you dwell in the domain of darkness, the authority, the rulership of Satan. Okay, and so by taking your record of sin and debt, nailing it to the cross with Christ, paying for it and atoning for it by the blood of Jesus Christ, by him giving his life for you in your place, um, he has disarmed the rulers and authorities. He's taken away the basis for their authority over you, and he's put them to open shame. Okay, so so this is how God um, delivers us from the domain of darkness. It's as he, Im, he imputes our sin onto Jesus Christ upon the cross. And then it says he's transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. So as the righteousness of Jesus Christ now is transferred to you, having all your sins been atoned for in his sacrifice upon the cross, now his righteousness is transferred, imputed to you. Now you at the same time are also transferred. You're transferred and given citizenship to the kingdom, the rule, the domain, the absolute authority of the only beloved son of God. So now you are given a citizenship in a new kingdom. You're given a place among those who are being sanctified. Okay, And this was always Jesus's mission from the very beginning in incarnating into the world and taking up upon himself human flesh and becoming always in all ways like his brothers okay in john chapter 12 jesus said it this way i have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness okay again we are all born into darkness this is our natural state our natural citizenship our natural position is under the authority of the powers of darkness under the authority of satan who is described in the bible as the god little g of this world okay so he said i've come jesus said 
as light. Okay, in a world that was pure darkness, light pierces the darkness so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. And so the question, the, the only question that remains is how? How can I receive his light? How can I be justified, declared righteous, not by my own righteousness, that the Bible says all of our righteous works are like filthy rags before him. So we're not going to stand before God in the judgment, and he's going to take a scale and weigh our good deeds and our bad deeds. And if our good deeds outweigh our bad deeds, then we get to come into the kingdom. No, we don't have good deeds. All of our good deeds, all of our righteousness, all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. And so we have filthy rags and we have sin to offer to God. We have nothing else. But when God takes our sin and imputes it and transfers it to Jesus Christ, nails it to the cross, right? Canceling our record of debt through the life and through the blood and the death of Jesus Christ. And then he takes Christ's righteousness and imputes it upon us. Now we can stand before him in righteousness. It's just not our righteousness. It's an alien righteousness. It's a righteousness that comes from outside of us, but is put upon us and that covers our sin, covers our unrighteousness, right? And it takes the place of what was our sin and our righteousness. Now we're imputed with his righteousness, okay? The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but we're justified freely as, a, as grace, by the grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, right? And so how can we receive this redemption? The Bible says this in Romans 10, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, because death could not hold him, then you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, declared righteous, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. God, I know that I am a sinner. All of my righteous works are like filthy rags before you, and that I can offer you nothing but my filthy rags and my sin. But I pray that you would forgive me of my sins by the blood of Jesus Christ and transfer my sin to the cross, and that you would take the righteousness of Christ and transfer it to me through faith in his name. That's how we receive the, the righteousness of Christ. That's how we are justified. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness, and he has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins.